How's it going, everyone? Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking about what I believe may be the best new diesel heater for overlanding and camping. And we're also going to talk about some modifications that, we're, that you can do to it to make it even better. Uh, first of all, it's a diesel heater from the company H Calorie. It comes in a toolbox format, like what you see a lot of people making themselves uh, from like the Harbor Freight Apache cases. What's great about that is that you're getting a unit that's ready to go right out of the box for a small amount more over the base model diesel heater. The case itself is a fairly robust case. It's not as robust as a Pelican case or an Apache case, but I think it's gonna last a while. And if it does fail, well, I've got all the components right here to easily transfer it over to an Apache case. The model I chose is actually Bluetooth capable. So while I'm in my rooftop tent, I can actually control it through an app on my phone. On this side, we have the exhaust for the combustion chamber and the exhaust that provides the heat to you. On this side, we have an air intake for your combustion chamber, air intake for your heat transfer, your controller, and a fuel port. On the sides, we have vents, both sides providing adequate ventilation to your unit, and on the bottom, there are plenty of holes for ventilation. One extra thing I had to do was I 3D printed a mount for the controller because the one that came with it was a little bit small and didn't fit the controller properly and it wanted to pop out easily. In the normal configuration, you would mount a fuel tank to this side here using these mounting locations. However, I am going to be doing something slightly different. And we'll talk about that in a moment when we go over the upgrades. The unit comes with some brackets to mount on either side. So that way your intake and exhaust pipes for the combustion chamber come out and up and are stabilized by the brackets. I have chosen not to use those because that's one extra thing to stab into stuff in my car. Instead, I'm just using stubby elbows that you can fit on here. I will have links down below for the heater and all the parts needed for the modifications, including this elbow here for the muffler. On the inside, the fuel pump is normally mounted here and it's basically horizontal, uh, which isn't ideal. So I am utilizing one of the spare mounting locations for the fuel tank to mount the fuel pump and that way it can be more at an angle. I have already upgraded the insulation around the exhaust pipe on the inside here. This is a fiberglass coated in silicone. Power cord that it comes with just comes with some battery terminals. You can do pretty much whatever you want with this. But uh, since I plan on mostly running it through a power station like my Blue Eddy, I found this. You can also use this for your refrigerator cooler. Um, it's got a very nice plug, attaches well, feels nice and solid. So that's what I'm gonna be using with this. Now let's talk about a major improvement that I'm gonna be making to this. And that involves the fuel tank. I've had it where those cheap plastic fuel tanks that they come with have leaked and poor Andy, it got all over his sleep, sleeping bag. So I'm going to attempt to make this leak proof. Another benefit to that is that with the fuel tank on the side, you can't really lay this down on its side for travel. Uh, so it adds more versatility to the overall setup. In order to accomplish that, I'm gonna be using some no loss marine fuel fittings. They clip together nice and tight. They have a nice pop when they release. If you buy your a pre-made fuel hose, make sure you get like a quarter inch line because some of them can be really thick, much thicker than what we need for this purpose. This one's gonna be mounted here. And then we're gonna have another one with a pickup tube 
mounted to a fuel tank. I'm gonna mount the other one to this fuel tank here. It's nice and robust, and I like the form factor. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the intake for the combustion chamber, so we have a little bit more room to play. Then we're gonna remove the fuel system. Move these two screws here. Now what we're gonna wanna do is take the male marine fitting, and we're gonna wanna put that through, but that hole's not quite large enough, so we're gonna need to drill that out just a little bit. And then on the inside, we're gonna be attaching this barbed fitting. This is a quarter inch NPT, an eighth inch barb. We're also gonna need to cut off or file down these little nubs that the screws went into. All right, I cut off those nubs to make it flush and drilled out the hole to be larger. And then I installed this grommet so that way when I tighten down the fittings, it will compress and hold it in place. Put some Teflon on your threads. Go ahead and tighten it down. All right, next we're gonna work on the uh, fuel tank. I went with the Wavian because they're a good, reputable brand. Um, this cap is definitely not gonna pop open or anything. It's got a locking mechanism to prevent that. Uh, I went ahead and uh, filled it, rinsed it out. It's got water in it right now, uh, just to capture any shavings as we drill a hole. Now what we're going to do for the fuel tank is we have a bulkhead fitting. The female inside is a quarter inch NPT and the outside male threads is half inch NPT. That is gonna go through the actual bulkhead of the fuel tank. On the inside of the tank, we have this fitting. This is a quarter inch NPT to quarter inch compression fitting. So that way we can make a pickup tube out of the copper line. And on the outside of the tank, we have our marine fuel fitting with a quarter inch NPT. All right, now that we have the hole drilled in our fuel tank, I went ahead and washed it real thoroughly to remove any uh, metal shavings, and then dried it out really well to make sure there's no, no water left behind. So let's go ahead and install our fuel fittings. I already went ahead and put Teflon tape on the marine fitting and on the NPT threads for the compression fitting. Do not put them on the compression threads they do not need them and can interfere actually. I did not put them on the bulkhead fitting because that has gaskets to seal up. We're gonna take our compression fitting and insert the NPT end into our bulkhead fitting. And just snug that up. Make sure you install it on the hexagonal end, not the round end, because it will make it easier for installing it in the tank later. I've already gone ahead and measured the approximate length of copper tubing that we're going to need. Now that it's cut to length, we're gonna take our compression fitting, put on the threaded cap first. In this situation, it doesn't matter because both ends are open. And then your brass ferrule. and then it goes into your compression fitting. You tighten down your cap, and that will compress the ferrule, creating a mechanical seal between the copper tubing and your brass fitting. Make sure to reinstall one of the rubber washers onto your bulkhead fitting before installing it into your fuel tank. We're gonna feed some fishing line through to help guide our fitting into place. A quick and easy way to feed your line through is actually to use a vacuum on one of your holes here. Uh, put the fishing line in one hole, vacuum on the other, and it'll pull the, the line right out. Uh, but 
these holes are pretty close together so it fed through pretty easily go ahead and tie a fishing line or string around your fitting put your fitting in through the main hole and use the fishing line to feed it through the other hole use whatever tools you need to guide that bulkhead through then go ahead and install the outer gasket and nut onto that bulkhead use your fingers to help tighten it down initially to hold it in place and then snug it up with a wrench now we can install the final part the marine fuel fitting And now we've completed our fuel tank. You can go ahead and buy a pre-made marine fuel line, but since I want mine to be shorter than what they sell them in, I decide to go ahead and make my own. Make sure you do go with the smallest hose, uh, which I believe is a quarter inch from what I could find. I am using 5 16 inch barbed fittings because I like the way they click together better um they felt smoother and they do fit into the quarter inch line again all parts will be listed down below in the description i ended up adding another washer in between these two fittings just to fill the gap better other upgrades that and modifications that i've made since we're in here i've upgraded all the fuel line to hard fuel line i upgraded the fuel pump to a quiet fuel pump the videos I've watched, they're not actually necessarily quieter by much, but it's a softer tick. Upgraded the fuel filter to a nice see-through filter so I can see what's going on in there. And then since there is plenty of airflow inside the box, I have just gone ahead and stuck the air filter right inside the housing here so it's one less thing that i have to deal with now i say air filter because most of these have nothing in them this one has a piece of foam in it but it's just around the outside here and then i'll show you real quick actually as you can see once you remove the cap even though there's foam in there it's not filtering anything it's a straight shot through i think it's added for silencing I did order an actual air filter for this. It just hasn't arrived yet. I will include a link down below in case you want to have a real air filter on your diesel heater. I have the fuel line routed from the diesel here to the fuel pump. Yes, the fuel pump is facing downward. That's not really an issue. The bigger thing is having it at an angle so that way the piston can be lubricated by the diesel fuel. Then I have the fuel line coming up and over the air intake for the heating chamber and the filter's just wedged right in there and it loops around to our input. So when operating, I won't actually have anything hanging out on this side don't need the bracket here don't need the bracket here because on this side we'll have the muffler here can angle it up a little bit more if you want one last upgrade that I did make is I bought a, a better muffler this is more similar to the actual Wabasto branded mufflers because instead of having a straight pipe going through this one actually curves around with a bunch of holes and it's wrapped in fiberglass. A lot of them just have like a spring straight shot through. Uh, you can tell the difference because the pipes will be centered on those uh, where on the actual ones they'll be off to one side and you can tell it has to route around there. Again, you can see or not see straight through it. Now the beautiful part of the system is everything packs away and I mean everything. Muffler, exhaust pipe, power cord, fuel line from fuel tank to diesel heater. This also includes a junction in my vent because while I'm up in my rooftop tent, Murdoch sleeps inside my car. So I stick one vent in the window for him and one in my rooftop tent for me. So that way 
we're both nice and warm. Everything's packed away. You can lay it on its side. You have a fuel tank here. That lock shut will not open and leak. And there you have it. Leak proof diesel heater system for overland camping. No more diesel covered sleeping bags for Andy. Well, I hope this helps you out with your next overlanding project. Again, if you'd like to purchase the diesel heater or any of the parts needed for this project, there'll be links down below in the description. They are Amazon affiliate links. They don't cost you anything extra, but it will help the channel out a bunch. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. I like and subscribe. I said like, like and subscribe, Alvin idiot. <laughs> like, like and subscribe. Like, like, and subscribe. Like, like, and subscribe. Oh, wasn't pointing at you. Like, like, and subscribe. One more time. Like, like, and subscribe. Nope, still didn't get it. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> and then subscribe.